Hello and welcome back to chapter 8. Today we're going to cover section 8.4 which deals with the determinant of a square matrix. Every square matrix can be associated with a real number and that real number is called the determinant. Back in um, section, I believe it was 8.3, you guys actually learned how to calculate it. We just didn't call it the determinant. Um, the determinant of the matrix is given by um, it, it's usually denoted by like DET with an A in parentheses or it kind of looks like the absolute value of a capital A here. Um, and you calculate the determinant by taking the difference of the two diagonals. So we're going to go A1 times B2 and we're going to subtract A2 by B1. So our first example says find the determinant of the matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the product of this diagonal, which is 2 times 2, or 4, and I'm going to subtract the product of the other diagonal, or 1 times negative 3, which gives me negative 3, and when I add the two of these together, or I'm sorry, subtract, I get 4 minus a negative becomes plus, or I get the answer of 7. Now, I would like you to keep a note uh, that the determinant can be positive, negative, or zero. We are not restricted on what the determinant can be. So it, if you get a positive number, that's okay. Negative numbers are right, and zero is okay as well. Now you can actually do the determinant in your calculator, and I will show you how to do this in class. Um, but on the workout problems, I do expect to see the work for these. The equation that we just learned here a few seconds ago dealt with a 2 by 2 matrix. Now, that works fine whenever we're given a 2 by 2, but any time that we're given something bigger than a 2 by 2, such as a 3 by 3 or a 4 by 4 or anything larger like that, we're going to actually have to use what we call minors and cofactors. Your book uses a definition that says if matrix A is a square matrix, then the minor M with a subscript of IJ of the entry A sub IJ is the determinant of the matrix that's obtained by deleting the ith row in the jth column of that matrix. Okay, and the cofactor is going to use the minor and then it's going to multiply it by a negative one raised to the sign. And I'll show you there's a shortcut that you can use with this. So Let's actually um, look at an example here. But before we do that, your sign pattern for a 3 by 3 your, for your cofactors, your first one is going to have a positive sign. The, in the first row, second column, you're going to have a negative sign. First row, third column, it's going to be a positive sign. Now likewise, if I go down to the second row in my first term, I'm going to change the sign second row, second column, I'm going to keep whatever sign was already there, and so on. And you can use this alternating pattern, and you'll see the pattern continues to repeat for a 4x4, four four, same type of a pattern for a 5x5. Five five. But again, let's do an example, and then we'll look at how we'll use this. Because I know that cofactors consist of my minors, example 2 says to find the, all of the minors and cofactors of the matrix. I'm going to actually find my minors first before I find my cofactors because I know that the cofactors is just a sign change um, possibly of a my minors. So let me, let's go ahead and find all of our minors first. Now we're given that M11, this is the minor of our first row, first column. To find that, what we're going to do is we're going to cancel everything out in that first row and in that first column, and I am now left with this 2 by 2 matrix here. So I can go ahead and calculate the determinant of that. When I do, I see I have negative 1 times 1, which gives me negative 1, minus 0 times 2, which is 0, so that minor is going to equal negative 1. Now for my minor in the first row, second column, or this spot, I'm going to cancel out the rest of that row in that column, and I now see that I have three 
2, 4, and 1. So let me just write that above. I have the matrix 3, 2, 4, and 1 left, and I'm going to calculate my determinant based on that. So I go 3 times 1, which is 3, minus 4 times 2, which is 8, or 3 minus 8, which is a negative 5. And then I have my minor for my third term in the first row, or minor 1, 3, is equal to, so I'm looking at this one here, I'm going to cancel out that third row, I'm sorry, third column, first row, and I see that I'm left with the numbers 3, negative 1, and 4, 0. So when I calculate the determinant, I have 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 4 times a negative 1, which is a negative 4. So this is going to give me a minor of 4. Now I have to go ahead and do the whole thing over again for my minors in the second row. So let's go ahead and look at the minor in the second row, first column. So I'm going to cross off that second row and everything else in that first column. And I'm left with the matrix 2, 1 and 0, 1. So when I go ahead and calculate this, I have 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 0 times 1, which is 0, or I get 2. For my minor in my second row, second column, I'm now looking at this term here, and I see that if I cross off that second row in the second column, I'm left with the matrix 0, 1, 4, 1. So now I'm going to go 0 times 1 is 0, minus 4 times 1, which is 4, or I'm left with a minor of negative 4. And finally, for my minor in the second row, third column, or this term here, I'm going to cross off that second row in that third column, and I'm left with 0, 2, 4, 0. So when I calculate that determinant, I end up with 0 minus 8, which gives me a negative 8. And last but not least, I have my minor in my third row, first column. So I'm dealing with this number, so I'm going to cross off that third row and the first column, and I'm left with 2 times 2, which is 4 minus a negative 1 times 1, which is a negative 1. 4 minus a negative 1 becomes 5. My minor in my third row, second column. I'm going to cross off that row in that second column there. And I see that I'm left with 0, 1, 3, 2. 0 times 2 is 0 minus 3 times 1, which is 3. 0 minus 3 is a negative 3. And my minor in the third row, third column, or right here, cross off that third column and third row, I'm dealing with 0, 2, 3, negative 1. So 0 times negative 1 is 0, minus 3 times 2, which is 6. So I end up with a negative 6. Now, I've gone in and rewritten um, everything that we just got done calculating above, and I just compiled it in one um, easy-to-see kind of table. So you can see that our minor row 1, column 1 was negative 1, row 1, column 2 was negative 5, and so on. Now, I gave you on the previous slide this little matrix right here for a 3 by 3. This is our cofactor matrix, and what this does is this tells me that the sign that I'm going to obtain for my um, cofactors. Now if I look at my minor up here for row 1, column 1, I see I have a negative 1. This positive sign here tells me that I'm going to keep the sign that's currently there. So I'm going to come in here and write a negative 1. Now when I go to my minor in row 1, column 2, I see I have a negative 5. 
But in this spot here, off my plus minus chart, I see I have a negative. So that negative tells me to change the sign of the minor. So now I know that I'm going to have a cofactor of a positive 5. Okay, and same thing with my first row, third column. I see I have a positive 4 here. When I go to my plus minus chart, it tells me it's going to stay the sign that it currently is. So I see that I have a positive 4. When I come down to my um, second row, first column, my positive negative chart tells me I'm going to change my sign of my minor. I see I have a minor with this number of 2 there. Because I have to change the sign, that's going to become a negative 2. For my next term, I get to keep the sign that's there. So I'm going to keep that at a negative 4. Second row, third column tells me to change my sign, which is going to give me a positive 8. Third row, first column tells me to keep my sign, so I'll keep my 5. Third row, second column tells me to change the sign, so I'm going to end up with a positive 3. And then third row, third column tells me to keep the sign, which is a negative 6. So I now have all my cofactors and my minors for that matrix. Now we don't always have to do the minor and cofactor for every term in a matrix. When we're looking to calculate a determinant, um, especially a 2 by 2 or greater, then we say that the determinant of A is the sum of the entries in any row or column. Okay, so we're only going to have to deal with one row or one column, depending on what we choose, and we're going to multiply it by their respective cofactors. So for example, if we're going to look at the first row to calculate the determinant of the matrix, I'm going to take the entry in that row, multiply it by its cofactor, add it to the second entry in the first row and multiply it by its cofactor, add it to the third entry in the first row and multiply it by its cofactor, and so on. Now when we do this, this process is called expanding by cofactors. And we'll look at an example on how to do this, um, just actually coming up next. Now example three says to find the determinant of A. Okay. Now, I put in this hint, and the hint says it does not matter which row or column you choose. However, if you think about this, when we're multiplying something by zero, that makes our work, our work easier for us. So if you can find a row or a column that has at least one zero or more, it's probably going to be a little bit easier for us to calculate the determinant. Now, you don't have to do that. It really, truly doesn't matter which row or column you choose but that's probably the easiest. So in this case, what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter if you use row 1. I see row 1 has a 0 in it. You could have used row 3, or you could have used column 2. It truly does not matter. I'm just going to pick row 1, um, and we're going to go with that. So to find the determinant of matrix A, I am now going to have to take my first term, which in this case is 0, multiply it by my cofactor of that first term, first row, and then I'm going to add that to my second term, which is 2, and multiply that by its cofactor of the first row, second column, and I'm going to add that to my third term in that first row, which is a 1, and I'm going to multiply that by the first row, third column cofactor. So to do that, the first thing I have to do is I actually have to calculate my minor of row 1, column 1, my minor of row 1, column 2, and my minor of row 1, column 3. And I have to do that because I have, in order to calculate the cofactor, I have to calculate the minor. Now, for the minor, I know that row 1, column 1 deals with this term here. So I'm going to cancel that first row, first column, take the determinant. Negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1, minus 2 times 0, which is 2, so this gives me a negative 1. My minor in the second row, let's change colors, so second row, I'm sorry, first row, second column, cancel off the remaining um, numbers in the first row, 
get rid of those numbers in that second column. Now I'm dealing with the 3 times 1, which is 3, and I'm going to subtract that from 4 times 2, which is 8, or my negative 5. And then I'm going to be dealing with my minor of my first row, third column, or this number right here. I'm going to cross off the remaining numbers in the first row, everything else in the third column, and now I'm looking at 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 4 times a negative 1, or a negative 4. This is going to give me a positive 4. Now when I have to go back and calculate my cofactors, I know that my cofactor for C11, and all I have to do is think back to that chart, so it went plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and I'm only interested in this row right here. So for my cofactor of my first row, first column, tells me to keep the sign, which was a negative 1. Cofactor of first row, second top column, tells me to change the sign, so I'm going from a negative 5 to a positive 5, and my cofactor of the first column, first row, third column, tells me to keep the sign that they already had, and that tells me that I had a 4. So now, when I go to calculate the determinant of matrix A, I really have 0 times a negative 1, plus 2 times 5, plus 1 times 4, and when I simplify this out, I end up with 0 plus 10 plus 4, or a determinant of 14. Now if you want, you can go ahead and try using a different row or a different column, but you will still get a determinant equal to 14. Now this example concludes our um, problems for section 8.4, but your fun fact for the day deals with the baker's dozen. And this again is from the book, I Didn't Know That, by Carlin Evans. It says, for the baker's dozen, in the olden days, bakers who had shortchanged their customers by selling lighter loaves of bread were fined heavy penalties. So back in um, 1266, the English Parliament passed strict weight restriction laws that scared bakers into making sure that they never came up short. So because the weights of the um, loaves could vary, it became customary for bakers to add a 13th loaf just for good measure. So a baker's dozen came to mean 13. So there you go. Now you learned something new today. Hopefully you guys have a good night. We'll see you in class.